Ich freue mich sehr, euch hier willkommen zu heißen. I'm uh, happy to welcome you to this talk, Hacking Vein Recognition with Starbuck and Julian. Das ganze Thema Biometrie... The whole subject of uh, biometrics is one of the chaos computer has been one of the chaos computer clubs for quite a while it maybe you remember iris recognition that uh, was hacked with a photo of our chancellor fingerprints made it to the media as well mr schäuble mr schäuble's fingerprint was uh, taken from a glass and um, now we're going to talk about veins and i'm curious to see how that's going to work there have been countless talks and um, press articles about this and i know <laughs> i know one of the things starbuck is very proud of is that his name was mentioned in the german bild tabloid but of course, Starbucks is not here on his own tonight. He's with Julian, one of his colleagues who wrote about vein recognition in his bachelor's thesis. And uh, this is uh, probably one of the biggest uh, uh, bachelor's thesis exams of his life. And without further ado, I want to let you enjoy the talk that you're all here for. Enjoy. Thank you, Karina, and welcome to the probably last talk about hacking biometrics. There, we simply haven't got any more systems left to do. This one's about uh, vein recognition. I've been looking at the at the two systems I'm going to show you tonight for a few years, but I didn't really make any progress. But then Julian came and he said that he uh, is interested in hacking biometrics and was looking for a topic for his bachelor's thesis, and it was a very productive uh, collaboration. Vein recognition is a fairly uh, is a fairly uh, new technology. It comes mainly from Asia, Japan and um, also the companies that uh, develop these systems, Fujitsu and Hitachi, are Japanese companies. Nobody's really looked at these systems in detail yet, which is strange because it's a very rewarding target, which you're going to see later. I assume that it's because one of the few biometric features that are hidden inside the body and not easy to see unlike, for example, fingerprints. But let's start with the basics. Veins develop in the sixth week of preg pregnancy. The um, rough structure from the heart to the lungs and um, the splitting is uh, determined in, uh, by your genes. But uh, the... the uh, detailed features is um, random and uh, that's why it's useful as a biometric feature because it's it's individual and it's different for each finger but also different uh, in twins the hardware works like this it's simply a camera like like the camera you might have in your phone or like a like an SLR but you take away the infrared filter so it also covers the near infrared range and the two systems work both work with 850 nanometers and for recognition of veins in the hand you have LEDs in this uh, sensor they're reflected by uh, by the skin 
um, but the veins absorb it and uh, that's why the skin is bright and the veins are dark. There's a there's a normal camera in the bottom and uh, the veins are visible as black lines. Recognition of veins in the fingers works a bit differently because the veins in the fingers are a bit deeper. This reflective method wouldn't uh, offer high enough contrast and that's why the LEDs are usually at the top of the device. They're scattered in the skin. Even though there's a bone in between, you can still see the veins which absorb the light and there's a normal camera in the bottom that takes the picture. There are newer methods as well that don't use LEDs, but lasers and micro mirrors. We'll be talking about those uh, towards the end. They're useful for detecting uh, blood flow as well to uh, check for signs of life. But the two systems that we have here cover 95% of the global market and they use normal LEDs. How does the software work then? All the systems use the so-called Mayura tracking. It's the picture you see on the top right here. It's uh, what these camera uh, pictures look like. The system looks for a random point and then uh, draws an intersecting line and looks for changes in the, intersec uh, in the intensity and when it finds a Gauss curve like this it assumes that it's a vein and from there on it looks from the nearest dark pixel and uh, uses this to recognize veins and it does that a few hundred or thousand times and it's one, once it's, it finds enough, uh, enough points it um, assumes that it's found all the veins it then does post-processing, the so-called skeletonization, where it takes uh, the veins, which are quite uh, wide, and narrows them down to one pixel, and the resulting picture looks like you see at the bottom. And you have these uh, minuscule points that are the features that are actually detected And you can identify people by their position and uh, by their angle. I mentioned that this is a very uh, rewarding target, mainly in the. It's mainly used in in Asia, where many computers have the system, but also as methods of access control in. Uh, in hospitals because the, uh, they don't require touch, but also in uh, ATMs. And when we visited uh, Japan, we noticed that all ATMs have these systems, but also Brazil, Russia, Turkey and Poland, so also quite close to home, have, um, have opened bank branches where you can uh, withdraw money with vein recognition. But the largest market and the most interesting market are high security areas, so um, power plants, banks and also the military. And interesting enough in Germany at uh, the uh, secret service, the BND. So if you uh, need some taps, maybe pay them a visit after this talk. We assume that uh, few places use these in Germany, but uh, the new BND building actually does, as our research showed. showed. But um, unsurprisingly, they were unwi unwilling to comment about this. How do you hack the biometrical system? There are two parts of the process. In the first part of the step, you record the tr features and you generate template data and a photo of that. And in the second step, you make the um, uh, 
Dummy. Uh, the dummy. To get features through uh, the sniff, that's very interesting. There are two systems that uh, have encrypted communication between them. But somewhere in the software, of course, the image is unencrypted in the memory. And you just find someone who is good at Eater and has a hook and um, extracts the imagery. And that's our starting point. And if in doubt, um, you can see, oh, that doesn't really look like skin or tissue. So you just adapt to that and maybe use a different type of paper. But you can also use this paper to, f to make a um, So the real attack works like this with a regular camera. And that's what surprised us. You can actually make pictures of veins with a DSLR. The only thing that you have to do is to remove the infrared filter. It's a regular silicium um, silicon chip, but it has an infrared filter in that you have to remove. And you just take pictures with it. It sounds very simple, but it took us a bit of time because we tried various cameras, a grayscale camera with various resolutions, various lenses. How far can you be away from the target? Camera settings, aperture, and filter, no filter, different light sources, flash, no flash, infrared, um, handheld light. We made about two and a half thousand pictures and the results speak for themselves. These are the images that we got from the DSLR. One for the finger veins with the flash behind the finger. The hand was uh, in between the light source and the camera and on the right side for the hand vein recognition. And there we had the flashlight from the front. And that was from a distance from five or six meters and there is no problem. You could probably zoom even more, but at some point the flash um, stops being useful. Since this worked so well with the digital um, SLR, we thought, oh, we have to try this in a more sneaky way. And we just used a Raspberry Pi camera module with infrared LEDs and infrared camera and looked at various places where we could use them. And these hand dryers are perfect because you just uh, move them up and down. Has anyone dried their hand? at the Congress already. That's what it looks like. We didn't manage to set this up here at this venue, but we tried to stage this as realistic as possible. And those are the pictures from the Raspberry Pi camera with the LEDs in the camera. And for the fingers, we have a small infrared illuminator that we placed on the other side. And I think it's very obvious that you see the hand veins. It's basically not possible to do this better. The manufacturers, the vendors have pictures that look worse than this. And in the next step, we thought, oh, we have good pictures. We need some kind of software to extract the um, raw vein patterns. So we wrote a small Python script. Um, it's basically very simple um, image processing that we try to display here. It just takes the image as the input, and we increase the contrast and uh, segment the picture in small tiles. Increase the contrast. And we have a very homogeneous picture in the final step. In the next step, we're applying a threshold. Everything that's darker gets assigned dark pixels, and everything that's lighter is white. That's at the top right. And there's a lot of noise in there and a lot of shadows. And we filter that with a Gaussian blur. And then we um, blurred that a bit more because it's better if there are no hard um, corners. And because it 
was a bit thicker during our image processing, we skeletonized the result. And compare this, this is a DSLR picture from five meters away, and the right part is what the software outputs. And the same thing for the finger veins. This is basically the same. You just have to adjust the parameters a bit because the um, light is from the other side. And for the next step, we, had our, we have our method of obtaining the patterns. So now we have to um, the build the dummy. And what we did, we tried it with an inkjet printer, but you don't see anything. That's basically like a blank sheet of paper. And at some point, we found that a uh, laser toner is um, very apparent and that's where we started. We started to look for some material and started to stack the paper because the main problem was that um, the recordings were way too bright because it's way too bright. And we knew that we have to somehow subdue it. We used a latex gloves and by coincidence, we found that bee wax basically looks like human tissue. So we built this mold and filled it with bee wax and had the uh, printout of the laser toner on top and another um, layer of bright red bee wax. And if you present um, this to the scanner, um, it recognizes it without any problems. So we have a live demo and I hope this works. All right. So you can assign an ID, uh, a four-digit ID here. My hand is going to be zero. Okay, that was very clear. Hold on, we have to plug the USB. That is the, the perfect demo effect. All right. Access granted. So that was my right hand, and now the the same with the wax dummy. Access denied. Please place your hand above the sensor. Access denied. Please place your hand above the sensor. Show effect. Please place your hand above the sensor. Access denied. Okay. All right. Um, darken the stage a bit, please. If if need be, we have a video, but it's a bit shaky. Access denied. Please place your hand above the sensor. Access denied. Okay. So we we just we, we tried this um, a couple times and it always worked. No, 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 no. Well, I I would say we'll we'll continue with the finger wanes. So we have prepared a video so that you actually believe us. As as we said, it's a bit shaky. That's the hand and the sensor. 
And now at the bottom of the screen, you should see the, the number four times seven with a hand. And now we place the, the wax dummy. And again, you see the, the four times seven. We'll, we'll retry the demo at the end of the presentation. Um, we're sure we'll get it to work. It might be the lights. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Due to the lighting situation, we'll retry under the table. Please place your hand above the sensor. <sighs> ah, success. <laughs> so we guess that it's the, the stage lighting that casts enough infrared lighting and, and stops the sensor from working. So the, the, the next thing we want to talk about is finger veins. And first I'll, I'll demonstrate with my own finger to show that it's enrolled. Starbucks right pointing finger. And demo in the first time with a wax dummy. Okay, we're going on. So what you see here is the, the same cast we used for the finger dummies. Same principle. We, we used beeswax for a base plate then a printout and wrap that in red wax. Works wonderfully with the, the sole difference that for the, the finger vein, what we did was mirror the output and um, wrap it from the, the other side using the, the wax as a dampening material between the output, uh, the, the printout and the scanner. During all of our work, we we had this open question of how does it do a, a live detection? Uh, you can read in carrots and, and wax, especially the, the hand vein scanners. The, the, the vendors advertise that they have a liveness detection, both of them, and apparently that's not the case. Um, looking into this, there's uh, a lot of papers that explain how something like that could be accomplished. For example, one could use a, an infrared laser to detect blood motion. There's papers where people demonstrate the, the size, comparing the, the size of, of different um, parts of the vein. And what you see at the right edge of the screen is looking at the, the structure of the, the paper, of the, the actual toner on the paper. Some extra thoughts for what we, th we thought about. Um, if, if vendors improve their devices, we need to improve our attacks as well, obviously. And one idea that we could use is to laser edge or mill this into other materials to, to have more fine granular detail or 3D print the, the dummies. Um, it could be possible to scan 3D models of veins and, of course, print them. And it, in theory today, it's possible to actually print blood vessels. Um, so that should also work. In the end, I would like to thank very much everyone who helped us, people who sponsored the, the cameras. Thanks to the audience for listening to us, and I'd like to close it to us with a Q&A. Okay. As always, the microphones are spread throughout the room. If you have questions, please walk up to one. The most important remarks are questions should be one sentence ending in a question mark. And if you're speaking into a microphone, please um, walk up to it closely 
And I think there's someone at my ja. number six. Tut. Wie wahrscheinlich ist es, dass das is, unter realen Bedingungen funktioniert? How probable also is it that Bühne this war das ja would work kritisch. under real conditions? Do you mean uh, the actual authentication with the uh, with a fake finger? <coughs> with a fake finger, yes. These are these are old systems, but we also tried with newer newer hardware and software, and it really is a question of how you place your fake hand or fake finger if you if if you place it in, if you put it in the right place it's actually quite likely i think you actually calculated this there's a there's a about an 80% chance that the environmental conditions are right so um, these were simply the wrong environmental conditions but we are planning to try this in a more practical way for example, Poland is uh, not far away and we're already in touch with people. Habt ihr mal eine Entropieanalyse auf die Daten gemacht? Das heißt, wie einzigartig sind die Venen in verschiedenen Händen? The, the data. How different are veins in hands? We didn't, but there are papers on this. I think we have it in our collection of papers. I can probably send you a link. Um, ich habe allgemeine Frage, wie sieht es mit Tätowierungen aus? Also haben question. wir überhaupt irgendeinen Einfluss How auf die Erkennung? Tattoos affect this. There are some problems with this. Particularly particularly thick fingers are for example a problem. Hair on the fingers can be a problem and tattoos are, might be a problem if they absorb in the infrared range but i don't have any experience with this if you have a tattoo we can uh, you can uh, you can come up to us and we can uh, we can see what happens well, the question was already half answered so my question is what can you do to, to stop the, the finger from being recorded injuries or dirt are fairly unproblematic as long as it's not as long as it doesn't absorb infrared light but if you paint your marker if, if you paint your fingers with markers then you're probably on the safe side <laughs> so we expect congress to happen with blackly painted hands now the question from the internet um, the question is who's which politicians hands will end up in the next Datenschleuder CCC magazine we did try to make some, but the photographer unfortunately didn't have as much time as uh, they did last time. But uh, ministers of the interior, of course, are always um, a target. Habt ihr mal mit den Herstellern gesprochen und was sagen die dazu? Have you talked to the vendors and what did they say? We talked to both of them. We were able to speak to the people at Hitachi in Tokyo directly, in fact, and they were very interested and said that they hadn't seen this before either and they're working on a solution, but it still worked as it did. Fujitsu was a bit different. They had people here in Berlin and we met at the club. They brought their own devices, uh, looked at it and um, nodded. It was an interesting experience of responsible disclosure how how large a difference in uh, reaction can there, there can be Hitachi was very interested in improving whereas Fujitsu is likely to publish a statement on uh, our talk stating that it's only reproducible under laboratory conditions and not relevant to security Euch geht ja langsam die Arbeit aus, denke ich. Ähm, eure Fantasie, was, lasst, was lässt dieser Körper noch zu? Was kann man in diesem Körper noch eventuell what, biometrisch verwenden, was ihr dann nachbauen what, what werdet? Biometric, um, <lacht> Nur mal so, points fünf of, Jahre, of zehn Jahre, 15 Jahre. In, in five, ten, 15 years. There was one interesting system that uh, took heartbeat curves. 
but it was broken by somebody last year. The, the shape of the ear can be measured using uh, white noise and its reflections. DNA is going to is is will be coming, but there are I I don't really see anything okay. useful that can come out of this. Ja, zum Thema Lebenderkennung. Um, was verkaufen die Hersteller einem da? Also, wenn man tot what ist, dann ist die Extinktion in den Genen eh anders, weil das Gewebe nicht mehr perfundiert ist. Meinen die das damit? Oder? <lacht> Do they mean just basic detection or what is it? Yeah, they, they, actually, they actually are stating that you can't use severed limbs for this. So that really seems to be the meaning of aliveness detection detection but uh, the fact that laser toner ink or laser toner can can work as well but nobody really did seem to be aware of that ich also ich hätte eine frage und zwar but hat ihr system question, die attrappe erkannt also um, als attrappe did, did any of the systems detect the dummy as a dummy we can't say anything about this we met with hitachi and tested things but that was confidential There is one more question from the internet. So, um, in the dummies is yellow the bottom and red above. The red side is presented to the sensor. All right. One more question, mic number six. Wie lange habt ihr dafür gebraucht? How long did you work on this? About half a year, three quarters of a year, but not full time. After, after work and family, so in total might have been a month of work in total. We, perf we refined our approach quite a bit, but once you found out how to do this, it takes. It's a matter of, of, of 15 minutes. You take a photo, post process it, uh, it a bit, and uh, make the wax hand, and uh, there you are. All you need is a good idea. Um, it's very simple. Have you ever tested which companies use the Wiener Erkennung alone? Have you looked into which companies und, um, use Wiener Erkennung as a standalone authentication method? Und, um, Wiener Erkennung method. Und Temperatur. I, I work das heißt, for a critical infrastructure and they, they use vein detection also in space and the, the temperature of the hand. So is, is this research still relevant or did the state of the art already advance beyond it? In Germany, I know of only one company that uses uh, vein detection, and there's the only feature they use together with an access card. And otherwise, you have to overcome all these features in separation. Face recognition has been, uh, has been cracked. Temperature might be a bit more difficult. <laughs> But uh, I mean, <laughs> wax is not going to melt because your your temperature, your body temperature, is rarely 60 degrees. And um, cash machines in Japan use very simple vein scanners, so it's okay. it, they they don't use anything fancy. Das sage ich euch nachher persönlich, aber nicht hier. But tell us where you work. Oh, I'll tell you personally after it. Um, bei einer Folie war zu sehen, dass on auf diesem Geldautomaten the ein Fingerscanner ohne diese Brücke oben drüber war. Wie funktioniert the der? Top. Der kann ja dann nicht how, durch meinen Finger leuchten, work? sondern I, I nur von unten gehen. Ich glaube, es kann nicht durch meinen Finger leuchten, sondern nur von unten gehen. Wie funktioniert der? Was ist die Methode? Du sprichst über diesen. Du kannst auch von unten aus die Infrarot Licht von der Seite and because it gets scattered you can uh, it, it it will work as well so if if you have space restrictions you can also um, find the light from the side we didn't have any systems that worked in the same way but i would assume that uh, there would be minimal changes required in building Danke. the fake hand Außer dem Laserdrucker hattet ihr noch andere Ansätze, also Materialien, die sich dafür eignen würden? Did you have any other materials that could be used in in this? Carrots work very well. 
the three-dimensional structures um, are sometimes sufficient that you naturally find in carrots. No, using, drawing them manually is more, far more difficult than printing them. And um, we'll see how the vendors improve their systems, and then we'll see how, how we can improve our cracks. Lässt sich eure Methode auch auf can your Retina method be applied to, to retinal scanners as well? A very good question. I mentioned that there are nearly no systems left to crack. Retina scans are, are the last thing we're, we're going to have to look at. The problem is getting your hands on one of these devices. So if any of you um, have one of these devices lying about, we uh, wouldn't mind uh, getting to play with it. Mic number seven. You had this build with the hand trockner and there was a special image of a hand dryer with a, a special sticker on it. Did that have a special significance? Possibly, yes. Probably. <laughs> the, the, when we googled these images, the first four images looked like this. So there, there has to be a reason for these uh, stickers to exist. Time for one or two last questions. How many talks do you have to continue to hold so that the, the vendors will recognize that biometrics is identification but not authentication? I would uh, like to leave that question unanswered. Question from the internet. The internet would like to know what the the added factor is that one should add to make the system secure. A liveness detection is a good idea, but it um, it simply makes circumvention more expensive. We could uh, use fingerprints at the same time. Fingerprints plus veins in the finger, but. That's a combination, so you have to build both of these separately into the same uh, fake hand. I don't see much problems with that. You said you roughly worked for, for roughly half a year. How difficult is it to, to take the, the photo that you need to create the dummy? With the small Raspberry Pi camera, that, it's fairly easy. We haven't shown you this. Maybe we have time to test this, but you can you can run a video as you move your hand over the sensor. They're pretty good pictures, and you can just stitch them together. With the DSLR, you have to the hand has to be exposed. But we did it in our living room, so we we didn't uh, have to go to a dark room or anything. You can you can do it on the street. We tested this earlier under real life conditions. This was uh, two hours before this talk. You, you can see it. It's not quite as nice as it would be under controlled conditions, but you can you can do it. It's work in progress. You might be able to take several photos of the hand or take a video. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sarah and Julian. This is